Hi everyone and welcome to blog 12 of the Tackle the Feelings Before the Behaviour Parenting Approach. And today I'm going to be talking about how to protect kids through divorce and separation. And I just want to start by saying that I have written a blog as well on my um, counsellingcouncil.blogspot.com I think it's called, but I'll put the link at the bottom of this video and it will also be shared on my Facebook page. So I'm just going to try and talk a little bit about the main points and if you want further reading I urge you to read my blog or keep reading up about this because I think it's a very important topic and one that inevitably comes up with, with a lot of families and it's really difficult and the children seem to be the bear the brunt of things, even though that's nobody's intention. But what I do want to say um, as well that's very, very important is that divorce isn't the thing that creates damage. And that's been a myth, I think, in many different cultures and in our society today, that divorce is really bad for children and it creates lasting permanent damage. Many of you watching may be children of divorce and say, yes, I was very damaged during my parents' split. And I'm not taking that away at all. I'm just saying it wasn't the act of your parents splitting or the act of you as parents splitting that is the damaging element of divorce. It's actually the reactions to the divorce and how you handle it, particularly between the two parents. So... I'm going to help you to understand how your children experience it, what the predominant emotion is here, and also a few tips about how to manage divorce and help your children to cope through this horrible change that, that's going to throw everybody's lives up in arms. So the, where I'll start is the, the feeling, because we tackle the feelings before the behavior. The main feeling during divorce or separation or any change or even grief in my previous blog is fear. Fear is the emotion that you need to be tackling with your children. And it's not fear because the parents left and, you know, they have all these preconceived notions of what marriage is and what a family should be and now how are they going to look and this, that, the next thing. That's that's something that isn't even comprehensible to most children. Under 10 years old is what I'm classifying as children. And even teenagers, the main thing is they are, they are feeling completely and utterly unstable in this whole process. They don't understand because they'll have love for both parents and they want the parents to stay together. So if one parent, if you make the decision to split or separate or divorce, one person generally leaves the home and so that leaves the child with a sense of abandonment and rejection maybe depending on how it's how it's handled but the child has this fear that if one parent that they love and that they feel that loves them can leave them what's to stop the other parent going to or other significant people in their lives or maybe their home, their toys. It really associates to many things and that stability of feeling safe in the world gets really rocked. So it's not anything like anger and resenting the parent that's left and all of that is not actually from the child. That is modeling the emotions from the remaining parent or someone close to the child. They are being taught to resent the person who's left indirectly. I know that nobody intends to do that. Some people do. Some people get really bitter and nasty dur during divorce. And this is why I want to make this blog. Because I think if you have your heart broken, a lot of people have had their hearts broken, it really doesn't bring out the best side of you. And you you get into a grief as well. It's, it's a real grief. It's a loss. And you've got to go through all those emotions that you, you've you got to process. And it can be very, very difficult to parent during this time. And understand what your child needs when you're struggling to give yourself what you need. You're struggling to get that support for yourself or you're feeling rejected. You're feeling abandoned. You're feeling angry. You're feeling resentment. You're feeling all those things and undervalued. And you you're hurting. Whether you're the person who's made the decision or whether you're the person who's 
who the decision has fallen upon, wh whether you didn't want to leave them or not, that is regardless. This is so difficult on all angles because there will always be loss. Even if you've chosen that loss, there will be loss and divorce. And so you've got to go through a grieving process. You've got to go through change. And nobody loves change. It's really difficult. So bear in mind your kids are picking up all of that. They sense all the emotions. They sense everything that's going on. So they have all these feelings. And if you aren't able to help them in the same way you normally would and help to explain what's going on, then they are left unguarded. And that, so they're going to adopt the things from you. So if they're feeling all this intense emotion and your predominant emotion that they witness is anger, they're going to relate their feelings as being anger or resentment or bitterness or whatever, they will adopt the, the labels and your emotions as their own. So it's very important to tackle the fear. So with fear, you need to contain the situation. Any anxiety, fear, stress, containment is making somebody feel safe, putting structures in, same as grief, keeping those routines and structures and discipline, trying not to create any further change. Don't start spoiling your children because you feel guilty. Don't start jazzing up their routines any more than they need to be jazzed up. Stability, consistency, con helping your children regain a sense of control, those are going to be the number one things that will be helpful for your children. But over and above all of that is reassurance. You need to be reassuring your children that this is not them. That this is not because of anything that they have done. This is not because of anything that they have said. It's not anything to do with them. That there's a grown-up issues. And just because mum and dad don't love each other anymore, or mum and mum, or dad and dad don't love each other anymore, does not mean that anything has changed in the love for you. And you need to repeat that. Over and over, as many times, whenever that fear comes out, whenever those behaviors start coming out, because children will act out. They will stop. They'll have all these emotions and not know what to do with them. And if left unguarded, they'll start pushing boundaries, getting clingy, getting emotional, acting out. You may find the same sort of things as grief as well, stealing or shouting at you, or the, the, you know, being horrible to siblings, all those fear based things where they've they're trying to create safety in their world because it's not being provided. They're feeling like they could be abandoned and it's throwing them for a loop. And that's where the trauma comes in. That's where the shame comes in. So your job is to reassure. And now I want to talk about the parents because you have a very, very specific job here. And that is to put aside your altercations with one another when you are parenting. So you need to actually compartmentalize your working through your divorce or separation and your parenting. Your parenting should not change other than the relationship between you two. You should still work together as co-parents if possible. And if this isn't possible because of all the hurt and everything that's going on, you need to gain some professional support in this so that you can get to a point of co-parenting. Trying to punish the other parent through the children is what damages the children. Bad-mouthing the, the, the other parent to the child. Talking about your problems in the divorce in a way that shows you to be the victim and the other parent to be the bad guy confuses the child. It confuses them so much because what they feel is love, what they feel is loss, what they feel is respect for the other parent, no matter what they do. But you're telling them that that's not right. And they haven't developed a sense of trusting their own feelings yet. So they're going to believe you, but feel something different. So what that, translate is that translates to them is that their feelings are wrong. And that creates shame. Because if their feelings are wrong, they can't trust themselves. If they can't trust themselves, they, they don't have confidence. Lack of confidence leads to low self-esteem. Low self-esteem leads to a world of problems. Shame is in amongst many, many, pretty much all problems and issues in the world, I believe. 
So you need to really nurture that and make sure that they are, have a way to express their feelings in the same way as grief, healthy, creative expressions. You need to not try and hide your emotions and protect them from your emotions because you can't. They will pick it up. They feel, they a felt sense. They will pick up your sadness and your anger and everything. You need to find a way to communicate that to them and reassure them that I'm feeling this way because of X, Y, and Z in an appropriate way. So um, I'm feeling sad because, you know, even though Dad and I know it's the right thing to do, obviously I, it's a lot for me and I've, I'm feeling sad as well. How are you feeling? Are you feeling a bit sad or what, what's going on for you? And really help them to identify those emotions. Help them to understand that mum or dad are not leaving. And even the parent that has left, they are not going anywhere. And if you're in a situation where a parent has gone and gone for good or gone to prison or whatever the case or may be, you need to really reassure that that's not because of them. That they have adult problems that prevent them from being the father or the mother that they want to be. That it's got nothing to do with you. And it is important to give them outlets. Children support groups through divorce, excellent. Being around other children going through the same thing, excellent. Picking up when your child is changing their behavior in some ways and nutting out that fear again. Rule of thumb, reassurance, reassurance, reassurance. I love you. I'm not going anywhere. Your other parent loves you. Talk so that you guys are on the same page. Find a way to co-parent. And try not to bring in all the other family members and friends and make people take sides because all of this puts added stress on the remaining parent and by stressing out the parent, the, the parent that's looking after the kid or whatever, or stressing each other out, harms your child. So if you can't do this yourselves, if you can't find a way to try and parent through divorce, then professional help is, is very much suggested, even if it's just to get some some ground rules set up where it's not one person enforcing the rules and another person saying, no, I know better, this, that, and the next thing. Having an impartial person, a mediator, whatever it is, to get you where you sit down and nut out exactly how you're going to continue parenting so it creates as little change and as little damage as possible for your child is the best way. So I wish you all luck. I want to also just finish this by saying children are very resilient. If handled correctly, they can come through divorce 100%. They will be just fine. You know, you 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 see some some families that have divorced and that the parents are still friends. That's a great, great thing if you can do that. I know that's not always possible. But maybe in the back of your mind, something to work towards. And bear in mind, if you're friends or family of people going through divorce, what they don't need is judgment. What they don't need is your your beliefs being imposed on them, especially if it's in the aid of helping the children. Everybody has an opinion. And that's not to say your opinions are wrong. But what parents going through divorce most need is support. They need support to help them strengthen up as parents again. Because going through heartache, going through loss, going through change, it's not easy for anyone. Making a decision to split is never easy. So a little bit of compassion for one another. If you're family and friends, compassion and Try to keep the children in mind. It is your responsibility to protect them through this. The way to do this is to reassure them, to tackle that fear, to be as consistent as possible and to find a way to co-parent. Don't pin the, the other against the other. Try to resist talking about your problems with the other parent with your children, no matter how mature they are, including teenagers. So good luck. Please ask questions. If you need to, I will post the link to my other blog where I give a bit more information down below. Have a great day. Bye.